Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for all uh, joining us today. Um, today, um, we're going to go through an introduction to the FGAS module in, in Click Remote. I'm Tom, I'm the training manager at Click. What we're going to go through today, um, we're going to go through what exactly is FGAS, uh, what the module can be used for, uh, what access Click Remote logins have for the FGAS module, exploring each login in detail with a demonstration of the manager, the engineer, and the customer versions of a remote. And then we're going to finish it off with a Q&A at the end of it. You should see on your dashboard that you actually have the ability to ask questions. So there's a little questions tab on there. At any time you can ask questions and what we'll do at the end of the demonstration, towards the end of the webinar, uh, I will look at those questions and I will try and answer some of them. What we will do after that, at the end of the session, we will publish these on the website with any answers I might need to come back to you with. So, what is FGAS? So, the FGAS regulations um, were adopted in May 2006. They were later revised in 2014 by the EU. Uh, the, the core aims of these revised regulations included the better containment of FGASs in their applications, the recovery of FGASs from products and equipment reaching their end of their life, training and certification of technical personnel and companies working with FGASs, reporting of production, import and export data within the EU, labelling of certain products and equipment containing those gases. Under the FGAS regulations, it is now a criminal offence to release FGASs into the atmosphere. Most of the key obligations are the responsibility of the owner, or sorry, the operator, who is defined as the natural or legal person exercising actual power over the technical functionings of the equipment and systems. Operators of equipment containing FGASs must prevent leakage, ensure that leaks are, leak checks are carried out, repair any leaks as soon as possible, arrange proper refrigeration recovery, maintain a record of refrigeration losses, additions and servicing for each and every machine. So we've had FGAS module in Click Service um, for some years now. Um, I'm not sure if you have seen that, but um, if I just touch on it on here, um, what we have in, in Click Service is FGAS module where you can see an FGAS log, uh, which will show all the movement of additions, removals, leak checks, leak checks, and uh, cylinder movement and, and refill it, refills. We can also see all the systems as we call it. So system is where it's obviously got refrigeration in it, and we can we can control our cylinders on here with movement and also returning to suppliers. Um, and we also have a section called consignment notes, which is sort of replicating what, what you will get from a supplier when you return a cylinder, which is called a waste disposal note. So we can create waste consignment notes to return cylinders back to the suppliers effectively. So, um, the next Click Remote update will include uh, the FGAS module. Let's just go to that, bear with me. So, we talked about FGAS and Click Service. The next Click Remote update will in introduce some of these features into the manager, engineer, and customer logins of Click Remote. Click here is showing you how to create them. So, the manager version of the Click Remote will offer you the ability to create systems, add equipment to those systems. So, a system is actually the, the entire system of indoor units and outdoor units. Equipment would be the individual units, ceiling units, outdoor units, etc. Um, you will be able to log charges, both removals and additions, and 
do leak tests, and all of this will tie into the job sheet side of the system. So you can raise job sheets and attach the systems to the job sheets so that your engineers can then carry out checks as, as required. You will be able to manage cylinders. So you'll be able to see the whole list of cylinders that, that, that are in your company's possession. That would be on sites, in vehicles. Uh, you'll be able to track movement of those see the history of the movements of that and also obviously return them back to suppliers. You will also be able to see a comprehensive F-gas log which will show you every single log that's been made on every single system and cylinder for all users. So the engineer version, um, similar sort of concept but it will allow just that engineer to just see systems that are attached to jobs that they've been assigned to uh, it will allow them to see just their cylinders that are in their possession. So this utilizes the vehicle module in Click. If you're not familiar with that, if you go into Click Service and look at modules, there is a there is a section called vehicles, and you can create vehicles, assign an engineer to that vehicle, and then cylinders can be placed against that vehicle. And obviously, that engineer logging into Click Remote would see the cylinders that are linked to his vehicle. Crucially, though, the most important thing for the engineer is he can do additions, removals, and leak tests against the system using, obviously, cylinders if he needs to. Um, and he can also see his logs. So he can see all the FGAS logs that he has created himself. Customer version will allow you to potentially let a customer have access to see their systems against their sites. Um, they can see the history of jobs created against those FGAS systems, um, and they can also see their FGAS logs, so they can create or, or print and export a FGAS site log. They can also potentially see cylinders that may be left on their site as well. So we're going to kick off um, going into the Click Remote. Oops, start again. Just a reminder before I do that, actually, if there are any questions as we're going along, as I say, use that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the manager version. So I am now logged into the manager version of Click Remote. Obviously, if you're not familiar with Click Remote, it's web-based bit of software so you can use it on anything such as a laptop, a tablet, a mobile phone, anything that's got a browser you can access Click Remote. Um, but obviously on the latest version what we have now down the left hand side is we have an FGAS tab and a manager can essentially have the same functions that the full version in Click Service does. So what you can see on here is I have FGAS logs, systems, equipment, cylinders and consignment notes. So with the permissions and click service, you can choose what each manager login has. They can have, be access or deny all of those individual parts of the system. So if I start on systems, when I click on here is what I am presented with is a list of systems that are created on our database. So I can see I've just got a company in here and they've got three separate systems at their head office location. So if I click on this first floor, AC system, it will show me the details of the system as we've set it up. So it will show me company, it will show me where it's located on the right hand side, um, and it will show me potentially or crucially what refrigerant type the system is running, what it was actually installed with, or the initial charges it's termed on here, what the design charge is, and crucially what the actual charge of the system is at the moment. With the actual charge and the refrigeration type in there, it will automatically then calculate the GWP, which stands for Global Warming Potential, and it will also show you the CO2 tons value on there. We can do a lot more on here because obviously with certain systems, you have to do leak tests at different intervals. Um, we can specify on here when the next leak test is due and also the interval on there. We can also create reminders on here so that it will remind us when that next leak test is due. Furthermore, we can specify the installation details. So if we were setting this up as a new system, we, we, we would put in potentially who installed it and also who commissioned it. Those two can actually be different if, if required. And also the commissioning date on there. 
And then again, if we want to put reminders on things like warranties, we can specify a warranty period and expiry date and reminder on that as well. Additionally, obviously, if a system is going to be potentially made up of a number of pieces of equipment. So on this example, we've got here, we've got an outdoor unit and we've got three indoor units. So we can link those to the system and then we can always click on these to actually see the individual details of each equipment unit on there. So we can see the make the model, the serial number of the unit, when that was installed, where the location of each unit is potentially. What we then have obviously is a jobs tab. So as we do jobs, we can link them and we'll come to this in a minute, but we can see the history of jobs that may be in progress or assigned for the future and also previous jobs that where the system has been attached to the job and, and routine service or in this example has been carried out. We've got documents tab on here so we can add documents to the system. So in this case, I've just got like a manual in there for the system. Most importantly though, we can see all of our previously logged leaks. So we've got a separate screen on here where we can see the leaks. Um, what we can do with this if we need to is we can actually print that off. We can also remove columns from here. We can do this on all of the sections that we're looking at. We can add in and remove columns on there. If you remove them and then hit print, it will obviously print the view that you're looking at. But if I go to the logs tab, I can see a, a full list of all the FGAS logs that have been carried out on this system previously. So we've got a mixture of leak tests on here. We've got where we may have added or removed refrigeration. We've also got the ability to create corrections as they're called. So if there is an input error or if there has been an atmospheric loss, we, we can log those down as corrections as they're, as they're termed. And again, with this screen here, we can click on customize. And if there are certain things that we don't want to see on this view, we could take, for example, notes out on there. We can look at that view and again, we can we can print that out if we need to. We can also additionally export it out to Excel, should be required. But with a system, it also creates a, a log graph. So it will show you historically the history of how much refrigeration has been stored in that system over a period of time. So we can see where the system was commissioned, what was in, in it initially, uh, and then it follows all the way through. So that, that is obviously a system that we've already created within the manager's module. If we needed to, we've got an add system button on the right hand side on here. So we can click on add system and it will allow us to, to add a system to any site that might already be on, the, on our CRM sites list. We don't have to initially specify a refrigeration type when we're setting up a new piece of a new system. But obviously the first time that we go to add an addition to the system, when we do that, it will automatically set the refrigeration type of the system to be that. Once we save that, we could then add equipment to the system and, and documents and, and, and everything else that we just went through. If we click on an existing system on here, if we want to do a log as it's termed, when you see and I click on add on here, I've got the ability to add refrigeration, remove refrigeration and also carry out a leak test. We can also add documents to from the add screen. We can add additional equipment if there was a, a unit not fixed on here. And we also have the ability to include action lists on systems. So if you wanted to give the engineer particularly a checklist that they need to do every time they go to sites to say routine maintenance, you can add an action list from a list. So I've just got a basic one on here called maintenance checklist and then can be carried out as part of the procedure when they're doing the job sheet. So if I went to add and I wanted to add some refrigeration to the system, as I say, I click on add and I just go log addition. And what that will allow me to do is add refrigeration to the system. I obviously have to add this from a cylinder. In doing so, I can only add cylinders of the same refrigeration type when I'm doing addition. So I can see on this one that I've got uh, plenty of refrigeration that I can add to the system from that cylinder. So I can specify the date and the amount that I'm adding. On the manager's version, obviously I can specify the engineer who, who's actually done this ref 
this addition. And if I click save on there, it's as simple as that, it will add that refrigeration to the system and now we can see that the actual charge of the system has, has risen to nine as required. <coughs> the CO2 is now also recalculated. If I want to remove, it's exactly the same procedure. I click on log, but this time click on removal. With a removal though, obviously I can use reclaimed bottles. Um, reclaimed, robot reclaimed bottles may include bottles that have mixed refrigeration in them. Obviously they can only be used for removals, they wouldn't be able to be used for additions thereafter. But if I want to do that and I want to remove a kilogram from here, I can do exactly the same procedure. Select the cylinder, select how much I want to remove and click save. And again, that will now reduce the actual charge back down to eight and it will have recalculated the CO2 tons again. So all of this will be now in the logs. So if I went to logs, I can see now my two removals on there, I can see that I've removed and I've added on there. If I want to do a leak test, I can click on log leak test. If it is as simple as the fact that I've checked the system and there are no leaks present, you can just leave it as simple as clicking on the date and clicking save. And that will just say that there was no log, no leak detected. So if I just click save on there. Now, when I look at my logs, it will just say leak test. And you can see on the notes, actually I took notes out, but if I add notes on there, it will just say no leak found. I can obviously do a more in-depth leak test, however. So if I actually want to record the refrigeration movement, I can click on there and I can specify the cylinder that I've taken the refrigeration out with and the cylinder that I have refilled the system with. If there is a variation between the two, it will automatically calculate how much the system has leaked out and, and add it to the lock when you, when you hit save on there. But again, the same principle applies that I can only add refrigeration from a new cylinder as it's called, which we'll come and look at in a minute, and I can only use a reclaimed bottle or to remove the refrigeration out of the system. So, with that in cylinders in mind, um, if I go to the cylinders tab on here, what I have as a manager is I have access to see all the cylinders that have been created on the system. As I say, with most of the views on here through the system, I can always click on customize and I can choose what I want to see on that view. So I can add in additional columns as they're called. So I can see like the rental start date and end date on there, or I can see the initial charge of the cylinder. But similarly, I can untick items on there that I might not want to see. I can also click on filter and I can filter it by a refrigeration type or I can filter it by a refrigeration cylinder type. So we have what's called new, new refrigeration bottles, recycled and reclaimed bottles. If I click onto any of these cylinders, I can see further details. So I can see details of what the cylinder is in terms of whether it's reclaimed or new, what the cereal is, what's in the ref in the bottle in terms of refrigeration type. So as I say, reclaimed ones may show more than one type of refrigeration. Uh, what the capacity of the bottle is and what is in there at the moment in terms of contents. I can also see who supplied that and also if it's specified, I can have a, a start date and a rental, rental start and end date with a reminder to, to return. That cylinder has to be linked to a location. Again, it either is a customer or yourself's site, or it can be an engineer's vehicle. I have access to all of the cylinder logs on here, so I can see where it's been set up. I can see if it's been transferred to an engineer, and then also I can see when it's been used on things like additions, removals, or leak tests as well. Again, it creates that in a graphical format, so I can see just on there, the usage of it. I've got access to add documents to that. So you could have your rental agreement or invoice from, from your supplier attached to it if you want to. And also I've got a movement history. So when it gets moved from one location to another, I can see that information on there. With a cylinder as well, I can refill that cylinder. So there is the option to refill the cylinder from here. 
So I have to select who the supplier is and I then select the amount that has been refilled. When I hit save and close, that will obviously refill the cylinder to the amount that I've specified. It can't obviously be filled any higher than the actual capacity. I can also transfer refrigeration from one bottle to another. So if engineers, for example, have small bottles that they take dirty refrigeration out to, obviously they can bring that back into the office or, or so forth and transfer it into a bigger bottle that then might be returned to a supplier later on. So you have a source cylinder which you specify and a destination cylinder and you can specify the amount that they're going to transfer from, from that first bottle to that second bottle. Again, this gives you the ability to, on a reclaimed bottle, transfer the refrigeration of two types. But as I say, once you do that, it can only ever be used for, for putting dirty refrigeration in thereafter. If I want to create a new cylinder on the system, all I have to do is click on add cylinder on the top right hand corner. And it gives me the details to fill in a new, new cylinder. Again, crucially, we've got new, reclaimed, recycled. Just to specify, just to understand that the new and recycled generally work the same way. The only reason we have recycled is sometimes you may have a bottle which you return to a supplier and then you might get it six months later. So in that case, you might want to spec it as recycled. Reclaimed is, is there purely really for removal of dirty refrigerations, as I say, it allows you to mix. But you specify, if you're creating a new cylinder, you don't have to specify the refrigeration type. Obviously, you can go and refill it, or if it's a reclaimed bottle, when you put gas into it, it will set it to that refrigeration type. You can specify the tear, which is the weight of the bottle, uh, the capacity that it contains, so and the amount that's in it when you first get it. So you could leave it at zero, or you could say that it's actually a full bottle. I could say in this case, it's coming from HRP. And I'm going to specify in this case that it's a bottle of 410A, I think. So I could put in the description just so I can make it clearer for myself and, and perhaps the engineer. I can put the serial number and the, and the refrigeration guys in there just so when you're looking at your list of cylinders is a little bit clearer um, and I can leave that into a vehicle so in this case I'm going to put it into my engineer's van and if I hit save that cylinder is now saved so it will actually log the initial setup and now when I look at my cylinder list that will now be down the bottom there so I've also got obviously a consignment notes tab on here. So when you have a cylinder that you want to return back to a supplier, they will traditionally, or they should give you a waste disposal note. What you can do on here is then replicate that waste disposable waste disposal note so that the cylinder will disappear off your system. So if you click add to create a new consignment note, on your waste disposal note, you should have a note code and a premises code from the supplier you can specify who actually got the waste disposal note and then we can say where you've removed that cylinder from so if you start typing on there it will come up with the details of your customers who you've taken it to i.e the company the supplier that you're recycling it to and you can additionally specify who the waste producer was so i'm going to say that it was the company that reserves it so if i hit save on that once I've created my note, I can then additionally add a cylinder to it. So if I go to cylinders, I can then specify any of the cylinders on this list. And if I hit save, that will add that cylinder, crucially, to the waste disposal note, or the consignment note, it's called in click. And that will now be hidden from our system. So we cannot use that for any F gas logs going forward. It's, it's kind of returned to, the, returned to the supplier. You can additionally on there, go to documents and you could add a document. So if you actually wanted to take a photo or scan the waste disposal note you've got from your supplier, you could put it in there. So from a manager's point of view, the only other thing you have on here is the F-gas log. So obviously we've done a few things, just carrying out movements then. So every time we do those, as you can see on here, we've got F-gas logs. So we could filter these if we wanted to. So if I went and typed in the name of a, an engineer, it will very quickly just give me a list of that engineer's logs. 
Again, I can print this out or I can export this to Excel. I can customize this view. So if there are things I don't want to see in there, so if I wanted to take out the engineer's name, for example, if I click on that, it, it would remove it from that view. And then obviously if I hit actions and, and exported that to Excel, it would export it in the, in the, the view that we're looking at. Put it back. If I wanted to filter that by a date range, if I click on filter, I can either manually specify a date range using the from and to dates, or I can use the date range, which has convenient predefined date ranges on there. So I could click like this month and there are all my FGAS logs for this month. Obviously, if you see at the bottom, it says showing one of 10 entries, I can actually change this for you to say, show me 50 and I can see all of my logs on one page. So that really is the engineer's version. Uh, sorry, the, the, the engineer's version, the, the manager's version. They have, as I say, pretty much access to everything that you do in Click Service. The engineer's version works on a similar sort of concept, but obviously what we want to probably do with engineers is we, we just want to allow them to see their jobs and just the systems that are attached to their jobs and also their logs, cylinders and consignment notes. So I'm now logged in as an engineer into, into Click Remote. So what we see on the left hand side down here now is an FGAS tab, but obviously we only have three options on here. So the first one of those is my FGAS logs. So that, similar to what we were just looking at a minute ago, shows me just my FGAS logs. So I'm logged in as Ringo, I can see all of the actions that I've done. And again, just like we we're talking about a minute ago, I can customize that view to exactly how I want it to look and I can filter it exactly how I want it to look. I can optionally, and this is down to permissions that you can set in, in click service for the engineer. I could allow my engineer to print or export those logs out if, if required. But as you can see, the engineer doesn't have a systems tab down here. What they will tend to do is they will be assigned jobs. So obviously Click Remote allows you to raise jobs and assign an engineer to it. So I only see the jobs that I am assigned to as an engineer. And if I click on one of these jobs, when I go into that, crucially, I've got the details on my job on the front page. I've got the details at the bottom of what I need to be doing. So I can see that the first floor system air conditioning is not working. Across the top, however, I have a tab called systems. And if I click on systems, I can see that actually I've been assigned both the first floor and second floor systems have been attached to the job. So if I click on these, I can then, similar to what we were just looking at in the manager's version, I can see the details of that system. So what that allows me to do is if I click on add on here, I can do additions, removals and leak tests in exactly the same way that we just saw them on the manager's version with one exception in that when I click on addition, I only have access to the cylinders that me as an engineer are allocated to my vehicle. Additionally, they can have access to any cylinders that may be left on that specific site of that system as well. And that is permission again. But for the most part, I'm only gonna be able to add refrigeration from a cylinder that is in my van. So if I want to do that, it's exactly the same principle as we did before. I click on add and I do addition and I specify the amount that I'm adding. Again, I can't change the engineer's name as well. That's just myself and click save. <clears throat> and again, that will just create an increase in the actual chart and that will add it to the log on the system again. Same as before with log removal. So I can do exactly the same, but I will only have a Again, access to cylinders in my possession. I can do leak test in exactly the same way again. So I can either do that, if there's no leak, I can just hit save and, and log it as a, as a leak test. But if I want to, again, I can click on record refrigeration and removement, and I can specify the cylinders that I've taken the, the gas out with and put back in. There is one additional for an engineer. They can do a correction on here. So if they have made a mistake or there has been an atmospheric loss, they can say that they've done an input error, so they've made, made a mistake and that will correct the value in the system. Or if there has been a leak, they can, they can specify that as an atmospheric leak. 
any of those will go into the log no matter what you do. So you can see on here that we've got a correction that I did earlier today and you can see that's logged. If it's done by an engineer, it will also have their name against it. So the, the engineers will have ability to see jobs where systems have already been attached. Uh, with their permissions, you can additionally allow them to add other systems to job sheets. So if they raise a job and they're not sure of which system it might be that's got a fault on, as long as the system is set up on the site, they will be able to go to add to existing system. And when I do that, it will show me any systems that are set up against that site that are not attached to the job. So if I click to add the third floor system to this job sheet, now when I click on systems, I can see that I've got the first floor, the second floor and the third floor system attached to this job. So it creates a history against the system. So when you're on the system, you look at the job, you can see that this job was associated with it. But also, if you want engineers to help you build up your systems database, you can give them the ability to create new systems. So they can click on new system and they can fill in all the details of a system that may be at a customer's site. They Automatically, it picks obviously up the location, company and site because that's already on the job sheet, but they can fill the rest of the details out, including the refrigeration type, what's in the, in the system in terms of a charge at the moment, um, and they can specify warranty dates, commissioning dates, installation dates, if, if that information is known. When they save that, they can then add documents, they could actually add the equipment, and again, if the equipment is not set up already, they can create new pieces of equipment. So they have access to systems there. They don't have access on the FGAS tab. What they do have access to though is cylinders. So if I go into cylinders, all they can see is cylinders that are in their possession. So these are all cylinders that are logged against the engineer's vehicle. They can click on these to see the details of them. And you can see on there, it will tell me that that location is a Ford Transit and it's it's under Ringo's name. That's why you can see it. But he can again see all the logs that have been carried out on here. He can see the movement history. So you can see when it was set up. So it was always set to this vehicle. Uh, he can additionally attach documents to it if he needs to. And he can refill the cylinder if he takes it back to a supplier. And he can additionally transfer it into a bigger bottle. But again, these will need to be in his possession to do that. So that may be something that a manager has to do, potentially. He can, however, create new cylinders if you want to give them permission to do that. So he could go to a supplier and he could put the details of a new cylinder on and he can locate that either on a site or on a vehicle, depending on what you want him to do. He can additionally with permissions again, create a consignment note. If you want them to allow them to return cylinders back to a supplier, they can click on add consignment note. And as we did with the manager version, they can fill out the details of the consignment note and then attach a cylinder to it. Again, when they do that, they won't be able to see the cylinder or use the cylinder through their remote login anymore. That's come back to the supplier. All of this will then go into their FGAS log as we've discussed. So they will be able to see every log that they've done, be it cylinder refill, transfer, FGAS log, leak test, it's all there for them. But they cannot crucially see anyone else's logs bar their own. So that's the remote version for engineers. Um, so the final version that we have uh, is a customer version. So if you just So, obviously with the release of Click Remote 6 earlier in the year, we, 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 we released a much improved customer version of Click Remote. So, if you're not familiar with what the customer version does, it can do a variety of things. It can allow the customers to see just their sites, um, the equipment installed on sites. It can allow them to see job history. It can allow them to see their diary so they can see things like raised contract visits or future contract visits, but also it's got things like service instance so they can like a prerequisite to raise a job sheet potentially they can see quotes that are raised for them and they can accept those and alert you in the office that the customer has accepted it it's got the ability for them to see their their invoices so hopefully they can pay you um, and also that it's got contracts in there so they can see potentially 
preventative maintenance schedules going forward. So with this in mind, obviously, we added an FGAS section for, for customers. Um, now, as I say, as part of a legal requirement, every customer should really, and it's down to the customer, should have an FGAS log. If they've got a, a system or a system with refrigeration in it, it's their legal obligation to actually have an FGAS log. Obviously, you can potentially provide this through Click Remote. So it's a lot simpler for them in terms of what they see. <clears throat> Again, if you give them access to job sheets, and you don't obviously have to do this, but if I if if I click on an existing job on there, I can see the details of the job. And again, with Click Remote, you can customize exactly what you want them to see, or more crucially, what you don't want them to see. But potentially, I can see the systems that are attached to a job. So I can see a history as a customer. I can say, right, these are the jobs that the systems have been worked on in the past. But probably more important for them, if I go down to here, I can go to FGAS logs. So what that gives the customer is a list of all of their FGAS logs for all of their sites. Again, like before, they can customize that view, they can filter that view. And then if you want them to, or export that. So that's a way that they could print or export an FGAS site. But obviously, if they've got multiple sites, this FGAS log is a global one. So what do we want to do with that? What we can do is we can go to system sites. Within system sites, what we have is the ability to list all of the sites individually. And then when we click on that site in question, we can just see the individual systems that are installed on that site. If I then click on one of those, I can see some of the information, but not all of the information that's been filled out. So I can see the details of it. I can see description, where it is. I can see previous action lists. I can see notes. But then I can see when it was installed, if it's set up. I can see what that is made up of. So I can't click on the equipment, but I can see that it's a, what, it's, what the system is made up of. I can see my jobs from here. I can see any documents. If you want the customer to see these, obviously you can hide the documents from them if you don't want to. But again, they can then see leaks on each individual system. They can see logs on each individual system uh, and they get a log graph as well. Obviously, if they've got multiple systems on a site, what they probably crucially want to see is the site log. So if I go to system sites, as it's called on here, I can click on the logs tab on here and I can see that is my site log. So again, I can customize that or I can filter that down to a certain period of time. And then if I want to print that out or export it to Excel, I can just use the actions tab. Additionally, if there are any cylinders left on that site, we can list the cylinders that are left on that site. So they can see any bottles that might be under the, under the site. So they've got the system sites and the FGAS log. They do have access to a systems tab as well, which will just show all of the systems for all of the sites. But um, again, they can customize and filter that. But the crucial thing for them will be the FGAS logs and the system sites. That's really all there is for the customers because that's all they really want them to see. So I'm just going to a minute. That really concludes what we've gone through. So um, that, that covers our, our examination of the, the, the three modules. Um, so um, any question and answers we'll go through now. Um, they will also appear in a future blog post. So let's just have a quick look and see what we've got. Okay, please will you be incorporating, will you be incorporating a waste to transfer note, i.e. consignment note on each F gas log, which imposes a disposal of gas? Yes, we've obviously covered that. So you create a consignment note, you return the cylinder. Uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will log it, that's fine. Just to confirm, the leak test, the system doesn't allow for the same reclass to be put back into the system. 
that has just been taken out. If it's a reclaimed bottle, no, it shouldn't do. Uh, obviously, if it's mixed gas, it's not going to let you do that full stop. But once you have a cylinder that's got reclaimed gas, all you can do is ever put other gas into it before it goes back. If an engineer was to forget to record the refrigeration but was less able, no, are we able to do the log through click service? Yes, you can do that through click service. Also, if you had the manager's version of click remote, you could do it then. Um, the engineer can do it retrospectively depending on whether you want them to be able to edit the job after it's been completed. That's that's a click remote permission again. <coughs> uh, I've noticed when creating logs, the cylinder drop down is it only shows the cylinder description. Uh, yeah, at present, because obviously there's a limitation on the view, um, it only shows the description of the cylinder when you're in the drop down list. I have put the cylinder, I have put the serial number in there to make it easier. That is something we may look at changing. We have environmental control stuff um, that comes pre-charged. Okay, so when you're setting up a system, it's the only time you can do this, you can specify initial charge without specifying a cylinder. So obviously if you get a new system and it comes with a couple of kilograms already in, in, installed on it, um, that's fine, it will, um, it will allow you to do that, but that is the only time you can do it without specifying a cylinder. Is this an app? No, it is it's click remote, it's web-based. Uh, can we have access to this? Yes, we will be, uh, we are looking for beta testers, so if, I will mention it a bit later, but there's an email address. If you contact us, we are we are at the final stage of the testing, so you can, you can have a look at it this week if you want. Click remote, is this used in conjunction with click service? Yes, you have to have click service to have click remote. Okay, can we add kit that is already on the click system and back at it? Yes, you can. What you must make sure you do is when you set the commissioning date, you must set the commissioning date for as far back as you want to do logs because that's the commissioning date is the point, the earliest date that you can do a log. Uh, there is the ability, if you've been using the equipment in click service, you can turn equipment into a system. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, so I think that's all the questions for now. Uh, there are a few others which I might come back to, but for now, I think we'll wrap it up. Um, what's next? So we'll be sending a survey out with the recording of this webinar. So attendants can let us know their thoughts and also what would you like, what would you like to see in the next webinar? Let us know. Um, if you want to know more about this version of remote with the FGAS or just remote or service in general, or the FGAS module in click service, just get in touch with our team. So contact your account manager, or just give us a call or email us to hello at clicksoftware.com um, and we'll come back to you. But that's going to wrap it up. So thank you for everyone that's joined us. Um, we'll speak to you again soon.